Contact loud, um, got you on the beacon, you're 100 metres from the bottom, over. Contact loud, 100 metres from the bottom. We've had 40 days at sea from Southampton. We started off in the Celtic Sea and we worked our way up through the Irish Sea around the Isle of Man um, and around Anglesey, uh, collecting cores and gathering geophysical data as we went. Uh, we then moved on up into uh, the northwestern shelf offshore of Ireland into Donegal Bay and on the second leg of the cruise we went north of there up toward the, the Hebrides into the Malin Sea and then gradually worked our way back down the west coast of Ireland um, offshore of Galway Bay, the Porcupine Bank and, and then home. Take lab, uh, water depth is 297 metres over. Looking back, it's been a very, very successful cruise. We collected something like 223 sediment cores. We covered up over 5,000 miles of, of ground on the cruise. It's a good feeling coming back into Southampton. The job is done. The whole aim of Brit Ice Chrono is to date, if you like, the timing and retreat of the last ice sheet to cover Britain and Ireland. We went, we collected um, sediment cores in each of those areas, we collected geophysical data, all with the intention of trying to collect data that would allow us to constrain the, the timing of when the ice sheet first retreated uh, from the continental shelf around Britain and Ireland, and then to try and actually reconstruct the rate of that retreat. It's a 24-hour operation. So the ship is always at the availability of the, of the project. And the, the way the cruise is structured scientifically is we have a, a team of scientists supported by a team of, of coring technicians. And they are divided into two shifts of 12 hours each. So there's a, if you like, a day shift which starts at midday and runs through to midnight. And then there's the night shift come on and uh, they run through from midnight to midday. On each of those shifts, they're, they're split into a coring team of about four people, four scientists. And those scientists deal with the, the sediment cores which come on board, and they are up to six metres long in some cases. And those sediment cores are chopped up and sawed up into one metre lengths by the, by the coring team. And then they're brought in, and a number of different analyses are carried out on those cores. Primarily, they're just they're split. Uh, and you take samples from the cores, for, particularly for material that we can date to allow us to, to con reconstruct the timing of retreat. And that's pretty much a continuous operation. The day shift take over from the night shift and they continue where the night shift left off. And at the same time as that is going on, pretty much moving all the time, and as the ship is moving we're collecting geophysical data. And that geophysical data is important because it gives us a picture of firstly the, the nature of the seafloor, uh, any landforms, glacial landforms left behind by the ice sheet that might have extended across the seafloor. And it also tells us a bit about what's beneath the seafloor in terms of the, the nature of the sediments and their, and their composition. And that's interesting in its own right, but it's crucial in terms of where we actually take sediment cores, because that allows us, if you like, that gives us the big picture, and if you like, the sediment, the sediment cores allow us to ground truth, or to focus in and get the detail from that big picture. The sediment cores are really what's crucial to the project. And the main tool we have for that is the British Geological Survey Vibracorer. It's a very large piece of equipment. It's lowered over the, the back end of the ship on a cable down to the seabed. And then the, the, the sediment corer, which is like a giant drain pipe effectively, vibrates into the seabed and is then retracted and recovers the sediment within the sediment corer barrel. It's quite a technical piece of equipment. It's pretty sturdy. It would have to be because it's been used now for well over a decade. And obviously it can be deployed down to water depths of 2,000 meters. 
years. So it has to be a pretty sturdy piece of, of equipment. The project is about dating the timing of retreat of the ice sheet. So to do that within those sediment cores, we need to find material that we can date for radiocarbon purposes, typically marine shell, marine carbonate material. But to get the sediment cores, they have to be in the right place. We have to, they have to tell us something meaningful about the ice sheet. Uh, and so to do that, we need to use the geophysical data to actually pinpoint where we're going to core. And really it goes on, the, the work goes on all the time, it's pretty much continuous. 40 days might sound like a long time, but actually when you're covering as much ground as we are on the project, it's actually not that long and it goes pretty quick. As you get towards the end of the cruise, the clock starts to tick down quite, quite quickly and the pressure is on to complete the work. We've been really lucky with the weather. We've had a couple of days of bad weather where we've been um, unable to core, but we've been able to collect geophysical data or we've been able to relocate to other areas further inshore where we've been able to keep collecting data. So it's, it's been very successful in that regard.